just gonna go straight to the in-game thing, okay? Just going straight in. No! Oh! Kevin! Yep. It's T.I! It is, yeah. It's T.I! Oh, okay. Fucking shit, what must I do? Hold on, let me close the chat window. That's the, that is the anti-thing to be watching at this point in time. So for any of you who don't know what's happening right now, the International 2017 is currently in the group stage matches. And the way it works is that there's um, two round-robin groups. Everyone is going to play two games against each other to determine standings. And those standings feed into the main event, which begins Monday. The main event is a double elimination bracket. So getting higher up in that group stage is really important. But you'll still get to see your fancy schmancy teams very likely be playing on Monday. That's right. Also, my audio's, I think, way too loud. Oh. My audio's way too loud. Holy cow. What happened, dude? I, I don't know. I opened uh, your Twitch channel just as you started yelling, and it was a little loud, yeah. yeah um, can, can you turn on your camera and Skype as well? I can't see that. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. By the way, Kevin has no idea what we're even looking at I'm, at this point I'm in time. I'm incapable of uh, being a proper talent without a program monitor. That must yeah. have been proven in the there past. There it is. <laughs> I got right, you covered, dog. Okay. We're, we're in the client. All right, well, which game do you want to watch? Uh, well, There's right now, I'm in Cloud9 versus OG, but chat, I would love, love, love... For you to let us know if there's a new game starting up. Also, Purge, you're just way, you're way too huge. Your head actually looks disproportionately larger than mine, which I think is the opposite of reality. We'll see. We'll see when we meet in a week. Oh, and then we'll, uh, I don't know what method you want to use to measure head size. Maybe we should probably use the water displacement method. I think that'll be the, the most accurate. And then whoever displaces the most water with their head will have the, the biggest and best head. All right, now, so for any of you who don't know, Kevin and I are going to be flying out to TI in a few days. Uh, about half the talent arrived uh, for the group stages, uh, all being split up to do coverage of various matches. The other half of us are showing up um, in the next few days. I think, Kevin, you get in on Saturday or Sunday? And I get uh, on, on the Friday. fifth in the morning. I'm okay, flying. so that's Saturday morning, yeah. Just Saturday, yeah. So arriving a little early, doing a little bit of prep, and then uh, main stage starts two days after that. So it should yep, be exciting. on the Monday. Uh, or on the seventh, excuse me. So that's sorry, it's not, yeah, Monday. <laughs> I stop thinking about things in terms of what day of the week it is. I mean, like anytime there's an event nearby, I am the date, right? I go on yeah. the fourth. I go live on the seventh. The finals are on the twelfth. I fly home on the thirteenth. Brutal mm -hmm. comes out on the fourteenth. I don't know what the fourteenth is. If it's a Monday or Tuesday, I have no clue at all. Um, yeah, I'm the same way. The only way that I can tell the day of the week is when Game of Thrones comes out. That's pretty much it. <laughs> You see, countdown yeah. and be like 24, 36 hours until Game of Thrones, and I'm like, oh, must be Sunday at 6 p.m. Apparently, so great. I would have no idea. So, I mean, like in terms of watching these, what Kevin and I are going to do today is we're literally just going to be watching games all fucking day, man, because they're yeah. going to be going on all fucking day. And for me, you don't know, nothing better to do, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, what am I gonna like fucking play a game of Dota, man? There's some Phantom Lancers in these games. What do you think is the best way to follow the action? Just use the directed camera, or is there a um, specific player you think we should follow? I, I am not the... I, I think we should do free camera if you don't mind obscene sometimes, if you get lazy. Oh, directed yeah. cam... Uh, actually, don't do directed camera ever. You should choose one of the options. Ideally, English probably should be better than the other two languages in most cases. So oh, yeah. if you if you do direct it, it's like the AI. Do you, it's yeah. basically do you want an AI or a human to control your camera? And almost always human is going to be better. Almost always AI. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, it isn't twenty twenty five yet. Are you a robot? <laughs> yeah. Do you just <laughs> just I reveal your card? I can't wait for these conversations in like ten years. Like what? what are you gonna let a human cook your dinner? <laughs> like, <laughs> Uh, I thought of a very dark path. <laughs> we can't so, talk about I mean, it. the thing that I find really interesting about this is the fact that No Tail was like a position one pugna. I didn't okay. see the start of this game because yeah. I always am packing it a little too tight. So I like st I'm still done my laundry for TI. I got a haircut yeah. tomorrow. I'm getting the dry cleaning for all the suits. So this morning I was in my car and had only the audio on during the draft. Okay. And so I mean, tell me about position one pugna because that's interesting to me because I almost never see that. I mean, the hero's not that picked anyways, um, but he's kind of seen a little bit of an upsurge in the past couple weeks from what I've seen. Um, yeah. He's he's basically been a hero that has been... When he came into Dota 2, he was played a little, but it was very rare. And ever since then, yeah. it's been very much so a extremely, extremely rare pick because Pugna has always only done magic damage, and he also doesn't have stuns. Um, Nether Blast always did damage to towers, but Life Drain yeah. kind of sucked. So it's like he just always was... 
he's very good at pushing. He's very good at early game stuff. Yeah. But if you go past like 30 minutes, he was just awful. And he's just basically just been getting tiny buffs for a really long time. And in fact, yeah, I'm gonna go look he, up his change log because I'm sure it's like I think he got buffed patch. like three, actually maybe more than that, like four or five patches in a row. Because Pugna yeah. is a character that I always accidentally notice because of the fact that I didn't know he was a hero. I thought people were trying to say Pudge to me. When I first yeah. started to play Dota, I learned that Pugna was a hero, and it freaked me out. And I just remember seeing his name pop up uh, again and again. And also, I mean, with Nether Ward, the fact that you can get Timbersaw and Lina and Lich. Yeah, any mana they spend nice to cast break. spells, they'll take a bunch of damage. It's, uh, But I think his best aspects of the hero right now... Um, or if you go Aether Lens, the crucial thing with this increases your cast range. So then instead of having to put another word at your feet, you can do things like put it on top of cliffs or on the inside of trees, so it's really hard for your opponents to target and kill it oh, to prevent that. Oh, holy shit. Never ward is zero range. Well, it's it's like very like short. You have to put it like right shit. in front of your hero. But with, uh, with either Aether Lens or the cast range perk at 20, now he can place it like, it's got like a 400 cast range. If you just hover your, your mouse over it, yeah, you gotta go one. find him, but yeah. there you go. Like, like that's insane compared to before it was about melee. So if yeah. you can put it on cliffs, things like that, it can be really useful. Um, and also increasing the cast range to Nether Blast is fantastic because at level 25, and I did this the other day when I played Pugna, increases your Nether Blast damage. So Nether Blast does like half Holy of the damage shit. it deals to buildings. So you can just like walk up, cast Nether Blast, and walk away, and all of a sudden the tower takes 175 damage or something. Or it'll be more like 250 once he gets the talent tree buff. So Pugna's good at taking towers now. He's been buffed so many times that he actually has some like late game solutions. And Oh yeah, and here's another cool thing. With Ags, you have a zero second life drain cooldown. And life drain one shots illusions. Because it's Holy it's uh, programmed the same as mana drain. Uh, based on Warcraft 3. So it's always one shot illusions. So it's good against Mantas. It's uh, He's good at sieging. He's just going to play really safe from the side, basically. I'm really excited at the fact that some Phantom Lancer games have already happened. We were talking about this when we were doing the tests this morning. He didn't fare very well <laughs> yeah. in a lot of the games. But, you know, he's making the comeback. He's getting in there. I'm very eager to see what the itemization winds up being. Did you see uh, the game that Notel played earlier today? He did have an Orb of Venom in the early game. He went like uh, BOTs, yeah. Diffusal Blade, Orb of Venom, Soul Ring, I think. That's what he had. Yeah, Soul Ring is a item that I do not really know what to think of on Phantom Lancer. I mean, It just lets you lets you cast uh, Spirit Lance pretty much whenever you want and not have to worry about it. Yeah. He doesn't have the best regen, though. He actually does because... Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I was thinking about Pugna. I'm sorry. My brain is still focused on Pugna. Um, you're right. He doesn't have the best regen. So, I mean, if I look at this lineup, I feel like Cloud9... Or, excuse me, OG has a... It's a pretty sturdy lineup, honestly. Like with the Tusk and the Axe and the Phoenix. And mm -hmm. this is where I this is the, 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 this is the reason right now is why I am hosting and not casting. Because I actually have to stare and look at what Cloud9's composition is for a moment before I get it. Oh shit, the call by Timbersaw. <laughs> that was pretty good. What is what, what would you describe as like the gist? of each of the teams. Um, OG has extremely good team fight, but also is good at pushing towers. Their team fight's actually so amazing. It's so hard to like talk about well thought out things when crazy shit's happening. Yeah, I know. It's like the worst timing question humanly possible. But basically Phoenix is really good at team fighting. Invoker is really good at team fighting. Oh nice he stole the gem too. Um, I would say Pugna's good. Basically, every hero on OG is really good at team fighting. They don't really have a typical carry, but their heroes do so much damage as a whole that it, I don't think it really matters. Yeah. Um, whereas Cloud9's lineup is pretty good at team fighting. Probably str a safer in the laning stage, I would say. Like Lina, Jug, Timbersaw, Lich. It's, it screams very laning to me. So um, OG just has to like get their kills and, and win their team fights with their better team fight skills, and hopefully turn that into tower tower pushes and stuff like that. I mean, honestly, Cloud9's team looks a lot like kind of a traditional draft that you'd get when I play solo queue whenever I'd tune in and watch some high-level match. It seemed like... It seems pretty straightforward in a whole bunch of ways. But yep. I mean, like, the OG lineup, the fact that every single hero there does something insane in a team fight. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, even Phoenix is doing super well uh, for Fly here. It's got Midas... Uh, Shiva's, he's gone for the Spell Amp perk at 20. 
So even though he's nor oh, he also got the Fire Spirits DPS at 15. I know that's a lot oh, of players shit. criticize him for this. Maybe not a lot, but some do. I've seen IX Mike tweet about it. Because the other one's yeah. 150 GPM, which is fucking insane. Like, yeah. that's the highest GPM perk in the game, and it's at level 15, which is early. But he prefers Fire Spirits DPS because it ends up doing, like, what, 240 extra damage per Fire Spirits at lands, which is crazy. Yeah. Like, doubles the damage. So he uses that with Spell Amp and Shivas to actually deal more damage in the fight. Especially in this game, maybe to make up for the lack of damage his team has. Dude, what I'm you could look I'm at super excited. By the way, chat, I would love your assistance on this. I'm actually going to increase the size of chat. Let us know if there's some matches that are getting started that are... Actually, just any match that's getting started. Because I would love to watch something right from the very start. Because at this point, I don't have enough of a muscle built up as a player to step into the middle of the game. And to sort of have the history of the game get programmed into my mind. I mean, does this happen to you when you tune into games? You can just, like, look at the GPM, look at the map status, click on a few yeah. gears, and you can sort of roughly get what happened during the game. You can look at KDAs and, and things like that, yeah. Um, it doesn't obviously give you every picture, especially the, the first 10 minutes is really important because you'll see yeah. what the lane matchups were. That that tells most of the story of what happened. Like, why is X-Hero behind? It might just be, oh, he had a bad lane matchup, or he was yeah. he had the lane against this hero in a sock door. He got aggro tri lane and it didn't go well. That's uh, the most important thing. Dude, I have watched so many of S4's games. Yeah. He is so fucking good, especially on Nyx Assassin, man. Oh my god. Yeah, there's, there's been a lot of Nyx so far, actually. It's been nice. It, it looks like they, they basically just like do small pings, and they wait to um, let Axe do initiations on heroes. And Tusk to save anybody that gets caught, basically. Or initiate himself. Oh! And the Nether Ward Blast. Got taken down, but two Phoenix is so insane. So cool. <laughs> and it's, it's Pugna too. Pugna's using uh, Life Drain to heal him. That's so awesome. It's Holy cool shit! Threat. And dude, the Nether War just literally plopped right at the bottom of the low ground. That's the second Nether War that got plopped right down there on the bottom. Yep. I so can't basically, believe anybody... the Ag's a zero second cooldown. That's so ridiculous. I mean, it, it definitely has some limitations, but it. It makes a lot better, definitely. Because then you don't have to worry about using it at the wrong time or getting stunned or something. And I'll remind all of you that there are currently four matches being played concurrently at this point in time. Let me actually open up the Liquipedia page real fast. Let me remove my window to the other screen without doxing myself. Excelente. Dude, this is... This is heaven for me, man. I'm just chilling and watching games all day long. I don't even have to play. This is great. Oh, this is actually really bad for Timber. Okay. Like, it doesn't look so easy for OG here. They just... They're barely even threat... There's, like, no threat to their heroes. It's basically just Invoker hitting buildings, and everyone else sits back and waits to react. And yeah, even I mean, no tail can blast from range. This seems like the slowest siege possible, but, like, the sturdiest siege, too. Yeah. I, the only reason I, I disagree with the word slow is because... Uh, the slow siege is, like, illusion heroes that chip for five damage at a time or something. Alright, yeah. this is a good initiation. Oh, saved by Jerex. Oh god, that egg positioning is so good. OG's playing oh. really well here. It's upsetting the cats, even. Oh my god, the life drain! <laughs> oh, pile I died! Yeah. It's crazy. Playing so well right now. They just always cover each other. This is like standard OG stuff. Yeah, I mean, ever since I watched OG pull that ridiculous 3-18 to 18 comeback at Kiev, I think it was. Uh, the final? The game final? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was just remarkable how calm and collected they always, they always seem so close together. Because, see, like, here where Pugna's up north, this is something that I wind up in almost every hero I ever play at all points in time. Where I'm just constantly far away from the team fight without even noticing. But, I mean, OG just stays so tight together. Man, Lena seems so weak here. Such a cool strat from them. The double heals made a really big difference. Wow. Just seemed like impossible for, for C9 to engage in a normal engagement. And even like Frost Armor did absolutely nothing this game. Like Lich didn't seem like a factor in the slightest. And, and this is one of the times where it would be easier to be able to see like the draft order and stuff like that. But 
That was pretty pretty intense. Seems yeah. like uh, I think the important thing to bring up about this is that OG has not won a TI yet. The first TI they went to, um, they they lost surprisingly early, and last year they also got knocked out really early. And they so, they have four majors, I think, under their belt. Right just now. a few majors. They've won a few majors. They're like the they're the, the they have like the best winning streak in any team in Dota history, is very safe to say, because they've won the biggest tournaments of the time four times when nobody's even gotten close to that. I think maybe EG is probably the closest. Yeah. Which game are you hopping in? I'm hopping into the LGD Execration. Execration is, I think, the only team that I feel like I know absolutely nothing about. Okay. Uh, well, that's pretty safe because there's a high chance they'll be eliminated in the first day that you are hosting, and then you won't have to learn anything. That's great. The important thing at any tournament is for me to feel good about me. And to not look bad. All right. Um, they are a C team. Um, so they they've kind of they've been a pretty long long-standing organization for a couple of years They've been uh, performing at a couple of TIs last year. They made the org at least made um, the wildcard matches and ended up losing there um, Although last year, I believe I think Abed was on uh, execration if I'm not mistaken So they've kind of they kind of changed players a lot. It's pretty yeah. safe to say like raging potato uh, who's in the he's the legion commander um, he's also known eh, raging potato lately has been his big name but he's been on like Mineski, he's been on um, a bunch of other um, C teams and things like that so they're definitely um, not as familiar but I think they are the lowest rated team in the tournament I believe according to some stats I saw on Knoxville's Twitter you know one thing I'm curious about is Earthshaker because he has been so popular lately and mm -hmm. I mean I don't know if it's, you know, just the fact that he has been getting buffed or people just feel like he works well in lineups. He's always seemed super strong from the moment I've ever played against someone who was able to execute four stuns in a row. Yeah, he's good. Um, he's being played support this game, uh, but he has been really popular lately. I think he was... I, when I looked at stats to do my predictions, he was the um, second most picked and banned hero, which means that the hero's either banned or team picks him. So he was at number two, and he was almost entirely picked. Night Stalker was number one. It was almost entirely yeah. banned. So Night Stalker Urshaker is way up there. Um, just stuns, basically, I think is a lot of it. Fissure is really useful, even though it's a low duration stun. The fact that it can come when you don't expect it means you can time it and possibly turn fights and ganks and yeah. stuff. It's just very good hero. It scales well in terms of team fights. Um, it can lane pretty well, too, depending on the matchup. It's just really good. Yeah, it was really interesting to see Sumail do Earthshaker mid. Oh, yeah, that <laughs> was great. Field do Earthshaker mid. Sumail, or um, yeah. Kiev. Yeah, yeah. That was really exciting. He dumpstered his opponent, but Enchant Totem's really good. He's got pretty good talents as well. And I don't know if he's been getting too many buffs lately, but... So Troll Warlord is a character whose abilities I know, but have no real sense of how to play him, other than he seems to be very good at taking objectives. Um... I would say more that he attacks very rapidly, and he can apply mischance to his enemies, and he can also amplify his allies' attack speed. It's probably the right way to talk about him as a hero. Um, and he's very good against carries that um, don't have amazing single target damage. Because Troll Warlord does a lot of single target damage, he will usually buy BKB, and he will pretty much always beat an enemy hero 1v1 except for maybe an Ursa, but even Ursa he can probably beat because of the mischance. So, and the reason that he's so strong is because he has a bash built into his skills, yeah. so if you pop BKB, he doesn't care because he'll still bash you and be attacking so fast that he'll continue to bash you, probably kill you. So, but he do, he has some lane weaknesses and things like that, um, and he takes some items to build up, but he's uh, he can definitely be really strong. I mean, in terms of, you know, like team fight versus, you know, pushing objectives, versus split pushing to me like i don't know is it still incorrect to just claim that is he actually going to get the no f way <laughs> oh yeah he's gonna lose wow no that was very close yeah because i mean it, it, certainly in terms of just like man fighting i've been eat like you know stomped on by trolls but is you know in terms of like if you are working with your team how does he sort of fit into like a full team dynamic um, laning stage usually has at least a dual lane. You don't really want to leave him solo because yeah. he's okay at the lane, but needs a little bit of help depending on the matchups. Um, and then later on, he can basically AFK farm jungle. He can push lanes pretty safely. He's pretty fast as a hero, especially with phase. And then you can kind of just ignore him for the rest of the game. It's not that big of a deal. And then so he'll do a lot of split pushing probably. 
um, try to show up to fights if possible, and um, just continue to buy what items he needs. And then he kind of just becomes a tower hitter later. He'll like attack towers from range for him and yeah. amplify his team's attack speed and, and things like that. So he definitely does a lot of farming, it's safe to say, but um, he does it very rapidly. So it all works out in the end. Oh my gosh, I just want to note that the series that are coming up is Secret versus Infamous, Liquid versus Fnatic, LGD versus It's Cut Off on My Screen, Interesting. Empire, and EG versus IG. And it says that these are going to be starting right now, but I believe they're getting kicked off. No, excuse okay. me, they are in 30 minutes. They're starting in 30 EG, minutes. EG, IG could be really good. I think that might be one to think about. Yeah, IGV. IG's beasting it, man. Yeah, uh, VP got... is looking good, too. I mean, everybody expected that, come on. <laughs> VP looks good! Wow! <laughs> they're, they're definitely, like, top four, most likely team to win the tournament, so... That is why I'm badgering you a little here. Uh, but, I want to see what's standing. I actually haven't looked at standings much yet today. Uh, EG went 1-1. One and one. Like, uh, LGD is 2-0, and oh, but they played Fnatic, so that's not that... No, weird. And Liquid's also 2-0. I don't know if this is fully updated yet, but... It's not that weird because, you know, they were one of the OG Brood War teams, and of course you would expect that of an OG Brood War team, you know. I don't understand your joke, other than the it's OG. Not a, it's not a joke. No, no, Li Liquid. Liquid is... Oh. Where I grew up, Team Liquid, the original Ah, I thought you were talking about the site. OG for some reason. Oh, no. Oh, look at that fissure. Saved Legion Commander from getting 10 more damage. Holy That's shit. That's why you pick our Shaker, dude. Yeah, he just uh, slams down out of nowhere. Fun fact of Afu, he's a Malaysian player. Um, played on C teams for a very, very long time, but um, recently got recognized as really talented. I think he was on Warriors Gaming last year. So he's uh, yeah. one of the few players that left from another region to go to C. Interesting. Or to go to China, sorry. Yeah, I really love player, the... Though. Good. Just distribution of teams locationally at TI. That's always one, been one of my favorite parts. And the players, too. If you go on Liquipedia, you can check to see um, how many players are from each region. It's always really interesting to see that, especially as they become more and more um, integrated, depending on, like, say, a lot of teams will say, I don't care where you're from as long as we speak the same English or the same uh, language. And as long as we speak the same English, it's really <laughs> the fucked up. The same dialect of English. There's yeah. eight different kinds of English floating around at TI. That's probably actually an understatement. Let's be real. Oh my god. Okay. Not bad. Man, Pugna. I didn't even, I just now realized Pugna's in this game. What the hell? Yeah, no, Pugna's Pugna in all the games, dude. Ah. My cat is never this snuggly. I think she knows I'm leaving soon, man. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. She's being a little snuggle blog. My dog has just been whining, but uh, exhibiting the same kinds of symptoms. <laughs> same neediness. Yes. So in these games, I'm going to be asking you a lot of questions about when players are going to the jungle to farm and why they're not pushing lanes, because I think that that's been one of the most sure. influential moments for me as a player to just be like, if I push the lane, then shit happens. Oh, oh, there he goes. The, Bye, Lich. The best way to do this, in fact, uh, for some games might be if we start watching a game, but we only watch one team's player perspective. Oh, hell that yeah. That might be really fun. That way we can... Um, try to get a better sense of why they're doing stuff. Because when there's like 10 heroes to click on, it's very easy to just zone out and like, oh, hey, they're fighting again. I don't know why, but they're fighting yeah. again. Yeah, you know, let's actually do this right now. Let's go ahead and follow player perspective of uh, our good friend Troll. Because I'm just really... Troll does not have those items. Hold on, let me deselect real fast. Tish. There we go. Yeah, tr Troll Warlord is the type of character that I, I... I don't even feel like I have a mental model to base it on. <laughs> You know, because I feel like with Wraith King and PA and Sven, there's a lot of similarities in where and how I'm farming that make me feel pretty comfortable. Sven can certainly cleave through jungles a lot more easily, but, um, you know, a character like Troll Warlord, I don't have the maneuverability or the durability that I'm used to. Um, I think that what he's basically trying to do is he's, he's always trying to figure out where the safe farm is. This is maybe something we could have covered in an episode, but what we need to know... what is realistic for him to do and 
Uh, obviously, being near two enemies was a little too dangerous. I think he probably shouldn't have died there. I think he should have realized that because that the Lich was there and the Sand King was there, that that was just overly dangerous. Yeah. So I think that was the mistake he made. Because he was thinking about going bottom, he saw the Legion Illusion, and because that their tier 1 tower bottom is already dead, it's very easy for them, for his opponents, to sit in that area and look for a kill. Because pretty much he just has to worry about yeah. duel and nukes. So or like I'm, three new heroes. If I'm troll, I'm thinking I want to go top, get the safe farm up there. It's pushed mm -hmm. in. That seems reasonable. And um, then probably arcing back towards mid at the very least, but maybe even doing two waves here. Um, I would do more because they don't have a tier one on the enemy side either, so he can probably go farther, perhaps. But maybe they will. Yeah, he's just playing ultra safe here. Because it's... He could definitely go push out top, most likely, um, but it's dangerous. Yeah. Because then his opponents know where he is. So that's kind of, I think this is something we've talked about before about how many lanes you feel safe pushing, or at least like if you are trying to gank yeah. somebody that's pushing lanes. He only felt safe doing one wave there, which is kind of intense. Um, it could also be because he's unsure if his opponent saw him TP in, because keep in mind he also teleported to the shrine, so that buys, buys his opponents like a couple extra mixes of seconds to know if he's in the area. And now he can see which heroes on the bottom. He just saw Sanking and, and um, the Legion. So that means he feels comfortable being up here to push. He'll see the Tinker coming. Yep. He sees Tinker immediately, hightails it away. Mm -hmm. and, you know, when, when I look at um, the lineup for Execration, I feel like I recognize what the threats are. Like Lich, very scary in a team fight. Sand King, great initiation, very scary in team fights. Tinker, it's going to be pushing the shit out of lanes. Lifestealer can shit on everybody <laughs> if he gets close enough. And of course, you have Legion Commander for the lockdown. But. With Troll Warlord, I don't understand the threat that he would present. Like, if Sven gets a sufficient amount of farm, he's just going to jump into a team fight and shit on everyone. He can almost, like, 1v5 if he gets a few good cleaves off. But what's the big threat if Troll Warlord gets well, a sufficient farm? Do you remember what I said before? What Which kind of heroes he's good against? It was um, carries that don't necessarily... I, I said that the, I said they don't necessarily have a lot of single target damage. That's one factor, like a gyrocopter, for example. Trolls good against gyrocopter, but yeah. the other thing that trolls really good against is heroes that have magic immunity. Because, like I said, when they pop BKB, they can't actually escape. Oh my god, it's the dragon build. And this is a perfect example. Something really tanky that he can just right click. And look at this. Does does light does he care about life stealer right now? He hasn't he bashed him yet, but he should have probably. So that's that's basically what's so good against about troll is that he can just hit the guy a billion times, and will, they will probably eventually die. I don't, I don't. My player perspective selection keeps getting messed up, and it's very frustrating. Yeah, no, mine keeps going to Earthshaker. Yeah, that's happening to me too. Um, but I mean, it could just be that that's who he is selecting. So when he stacks. God, I am. Alright, I'm going to free camera. I abandon ship. So when he attacks uh, up to seven times with fervor, he gets 210 in bonus attack speed. Yeah. Basically. And then he has a 10% chance to bash for two seconds, which, which is, is a huge amount of time. Ridiculous. Yes. It's actually ridiculous. So if he, as long as he is not worried him about taking magic damage or getting stunned himself, it's really simple for him to trade hits with Lifestealer. Because if he gets bashes off, Lifestealer's not auto attacking. So in and a sense, he's, he's sort of like matter. an anti-carry carry in the teamfight context. He wants to go straight for Lifestealer. Not necessarily. Um, most, I mean, he'd much rather kill the squishy. Like, you always want to kill the supports first, sure. if possible. Let's see if Pugna can get out of this one. Oh, was... Team Secret versus Infamous is in the draft. I'm oh, going to abandon ship. ship. Yeah, yeah, that's a good We're idea. ship. Let's get us some... Uh... Actually, you know, I, I'm very particular about this i need to leave first and then we can go to it team secret versus infamous in draft phase let's watch this shit let's watch the infamous puppy i have a secret two secret i have yepsor and m or sorry yepsor and mid one is my fantasy did you do, did you do your fantasy stuff no no dude no dude well you look like i don't even do the quests in game are you kidding me i will i do the in game votes because this makes it personal if I'm just doing regular old votes, that's fine. I don't care. No, it just doesn't. It's not as interesting to me as the viewing and understanding of the game. But in this match, I'm going to guess better than you, Mister. You know what? Every, for every guess that you okay. get correct, I'm going to make you larger. And for each guess that you get wrong, you're going to get smaller. Okay? That's what's that's going to happen. Mm, that's that's unfair because the <laughs> the the uh, the challenges are really difficult sometimes. 
but I'm I don't even know if I have fifty percent. I don't. Even, I don't even think fifty percent is fair because it's it's multiple choice. You're holding me to a high stand. If it was true false for all of them, sure. No, I mean I could I could hit fifty. Oh, your favorite hero, dude. Okay, so in terms of bans, Bat Riders out. We know Jesus, this this screen is murderous to my encoder. I'm losing so many fucking frames. I can't I can't even handle this shit. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm lagging, you're lagging. Oh whatever the fuck. But Night Stalker, I've been seeing him kick so much ass in Bat Rider as well. I mean both of them providing a shitload of vision and of course the uh, ability for Night Stalker to bully early on and Bat Rider to lasso. Awesome. Nyx, love this. Love Nyx always. You know, as someone who was snap first picking whoever the fuck I wanted to play, Nyx was one of the few heroes that I actually felt comfortable doing that on. <laughs> mm -hmm. what, are, out of all the heroes vendors, are there any that uh, you think are weird? Uh, Nyx is Prophet, should... definitely. Yeah, like, definitely. Dark Seer is an incredibly powerful offlaner, so I get that. Um, He's just obnoxious to play against. I mean, that that's my full analysis of it, but okay. Nature's Prophet makes me feel like they know so Oh my god, I want Infamous to win! Elder Titan, let's go! Yes! Do you know anything about team Infamous secret. as a team? Um, Very little. So they are from uh, Peru, primarily. So they're the South yeah. American team that ended up qualifying. Um, I know that they have a lot of fandom um, uh, uh, yeah. around them. Maybe not like a massive amount, but I know that there are a lot of old players from what I've yeah. heard. Um... So it's uh, they're definitely the underdogs here, um, absolutely the case. I, I'm probably I'm pretty sure they're probably top bottom four in terms of ranking coming in, in terms of expected outcome. Um, but you know, a lot of Southeast Asian teams have have definitely gone to big tournaments and done some big upsets. Like, I mean, uh, at uh, Kiev, uh, the Brazilian team SG Esports were the ones that knocked Secret out in the first round, which was and, which is beautiful games. Yeah, I mean, 40 crazy. was excellent on Lena and inspired all of my Daedalus love. Yeah, on it Lena. Was, crazy stuff and then the other famous time was i think it might have been frankfurt the first major frankfurt um it was the team unknown i think they were at the time which was um a lot of other uh, very very good players and they ended up beating i think a chinese team maybe and that was the first time i'd ever seen alchemist go armlet which is super fucking standard now and he did it first which i thought was cool back then um all alchemists would just go radiance first into the typical like Octarine Manta build, but he did Armlet first, which was uh, really smart. Fits yeah. the hero really well. It also allows him to do some man fighting in mid game if need be. Or, or like before he gets Radiance, he's not useless, and if he needs a right <laughs> click, he doesn't. He's not useless, and if he if the, if his opponents have minus armor, he doesn't get killed by three hits once he once he has Armlet. So. So I'm curious about the Nature's Prophet ban, right? Like, so I can I can speak to the qualities of Nature's Prophet. He can split push very well. He's very annoying in that regard, and. Darkseer also very annoying in terms of pushing lanes and is very elusive. But mm -hmm. I mean, so, I feel like this just screams we want to try to push towards a team fight, especially with the faceless void and Elder Titan combo. Yes, the the picks definitely do. The profit. I, I just looked at the Dota buff of uh, Team Secret and their games played last month. In the last month, I don't see a Nature's Profit. So what this probably tells me is either I am. Um, not up to date with the meta, which is entirely possible, but I think it's more likely that this is as a result of scrim results Because when all the teams arrive at TI they have like a couple days outside of like media interviews and like photo sessions and stuff Where they spend a lot of time practicing against each other And I guarantee that some of the teams talk a little bit about what kind of strats and heroes people are running um, And it's also possible that infamous scrimmed against secret and they got wrecked by a profit So there's a lot of things like that. Oh, and there's also the cross-regional play like some teams will be like I really value yeah. Nature's Prophet. He's the first round ban, and the enemy team might be like, dumbasses, that should have yeah. been a Nyx ban, you know? It's, there's so many possibilities, really. Yeah, I mean, in Brood War, I used to practice a ton with uh, Brazilian and uh, Russian practice partners, and they had very, very different styles. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah, Void Elder Titan, though, very standard thing. Um, they, they combo well together. The you can, uh, it helps you land your ultimate really easily. Um, you can just put your spirit in the Chronosphere and it amplifies the damage because it'll, it'll take more magic because of the, the aura. Yeah. It's good for roaming two combos. Uh, I think the, the first team that really did good like team fight combos, in my opinion, maybe not the first team, but yeah. the one that was most famous is probably OG. I think when they won, I don't yeah. think it was Frankfurt, I think it was their second one, Boston or maybe Manila. It was like Elder Titan faces Void Phoenix. Those three heroes together, and maybe an invoker, and they just went around like comboing all their cool skills. Now, one thing that just shocked me was the Storm Spirit second pick. I've been seeing in every major for the last few months, mids, with the exception of when Lena was really, really strong and she was like first second pick, mids seem to get picked much later in the draft. 
Yeah, um, very standard normally. Um, I would guess that Secret prioritizes Storm a lot as a... I, I see in this game, he is disabled, he can be disabled by Elder Shine Void, but I think they're grabbing him because they want to have a hero that can just guarantee kill Void at the start of the fight, or initiate, or follow up on Nyx. So rather than picking Invoker, which was an option, they'll do Storm Spirit instead because they prefer the hero to doing those things. It's also pretty safe at mid laning in some ways. I think it's going to have trouble against Quap and Elder Titan. Um, but look at the other yeah. two bands they did. I it mean... was Viper and they did Silencer. Viper would have beaten him in lane and Silencer, even as a support, would have made it hard for Storm to live his life. So yeah. um, he'll just have to deal with the Quap matchup, which I think he can he can be Quap in lane. It's, it's really interesting to see the first two bands from Secret and then go straight into this completely ultra team heavy focused. Okay, actually I'm curious about how to even think about Rubik as a hero when he fits into a lineup. Obviously early game Rubik has a lot of great tools to kill people with some burst damage, with his lift ability. But in terms of his identity late in the game, I mean, is he considered great for team fighting or is it that he is completely flexible given the situation? I mean, also picking Rubik shuts down the possibility of stealing Faceless Void's ultimate, which is a real pain in the ass. <laughs> That's true. I lost the game yeah. yesterday to this shit, man. But, um, and uh. also, Yapsor plays probably the best Rubik in the world right now. Um, with that said, I think it's very likely he would have played Nyx Assassin, so um, I, I, I don't necessarily see it as a counter pick personally. Um, I see it as they value the hero, but normally late game Rubik, you want to consider what ultimates and skills you can steal. Fissure is one of the best steals you can have. Stealing it is sometimes difficult. Um, Echo Slam. Uh, Echo Slam. If he has a four staff, he just force eh. himself in Echo Slam, and then it's uh, just not the same. Kill himself with that Bloodstone he has at the time as well. <laughs> you could, yeah, you could. Echo Slam isn't as good if you don't have aftershock on Urshik or his passive, because it doesn't quite do as much damage. Oh, um, you know, I always just associate them as the exact same thing. Well, Aftershock actually make, is a big reason why Earthshaker is stronger. Like, if you Echo Slam without Aftershock, it doesn't even stun. It just does damage. Um, okay. So I would say Rubik is looking to steal the Nyx stun. I would say Rubik is also, um, his goal is in lane, he can facilitate his allies getting a lot more right clicks on a hero. So if it's like Faces Void, Elder Titan, Rubik as a tri lane, they can right click Nyx Assassin like. Yeah nine more times because of lift throwback um, and one thing that's been very interesting to me in watching the sort of meta shift in the last few months is that when i first stepped into play faceless void was very off lane focused, and i've been seeing more and more instances of him just being safe lane mm -hmm. i mean obviously it's not that he's not put in off lane but i've been seeing mask of madness builds crop up on a lot of heroes him in particular has yep. been really intimidating for him to be able to just beat the shit out of isolated heroes solo I think sometimes. that's why he's being played a little bit more carry, is because people realize that Mask of Madness is actually still good. It was fine last patch too, but it kept getting buffed a little bit because people kind of stopped using it once it started silencing you. Um, and now they're realizing like, oh, I can farm extremely fast on all of my heroes. And Faces Void's other problem as a carry was in the past without Madness. He just didn't do that much damage. So it would be kind of like a kind of a shitty carry that could disable but it could kind of do the same thing in offlane. So I think Mask of Madness helps you keep your farm up, helps you get solo kills when you Chronosphere, um, and helps you transition to later stages of the game. Yes! Go Team Secret! Fuck on everybody! It's Phantom Lancer! Woo! Oh, Phantom well, Lancer! Void Elder Titan, dude. You're all excited for him. Oh, I know. They can suck a fat one. We got the Phantom Lancer up there. Well, okay, so Keeper of the Light Phantom Lancer is a ridiculously great combination mm -hmm. because of... Not just the obnoxiousness of mana leaking in the offlane. If we have Elder Titan or Faceless Void in the offlane, mana leak is so damn annoying and combos really nicely with getting Orb of Venom on Phantom Lancer. By the way, I played two two-hour games with Omer, where he was yeah. Keeper of the Light and I was Phantom Lancer. So I've had a robust amount of experience with that. Oh, shit. What an interesting final pick. So it's going to be almost certainly safe lane, Faceless Void. Offlane, mm -hmm. Ricky, Elder Titan, and Rubik doing roaming and supporting and quap in the mid um it should be support ricky ricky's play uh oh i guess you're right huh uh could be i actually don't know their their roles very well on infamous I can take a look that would tell us the easiest way i like i think elder titan um let me think elder titan's I, I don't know enough about. I don't know enough about in terms of early game. Like, I have played Elder Titan, and here's my experience. I shoot on everyone early game, and once we pass eight minutes, I have no clue 
how to play this hero properly. It's very easy for me to float a spirit around. Okay, I played Zerg. You need me to move two control groups? No problem. I got that shit covered. You need me to make decisions in the context of a game that requires depth and strategy that I don't have yet? Go fuck yourself. Let's do the first eight minutes again, man. Let me control two dudes and hit someone in the face for 80 extra damage. Yeah, it's it. It'll be easier to tell if you watch a better player do it because it's a uh, you. They use it like scan basically. Yeah, I think like uh, can I find where I think they are, and if they're not there, then that must mean they are. I probably here or there, and then you can use it for strategy. So do, do you want to auto spectate somebody again? I think um, uh, I don't know. Let's just pick a hero at random here. Perhaps Phantom Lancer should be the hero we follow. You want to watch him just get last hits for ten minutes? Come on. God, it's gonna be uh connection failure. Returning to match, can get out. All right, predictions. This is last the important stuff. Last player to be killed. Uh, last player to be killed. So who do we think is going to win? I'm going to lean towards Secret because I understand their lineup significantly better. So the last uh, hero to be killed will be... I don't know. I'm really feeling Elder Titan. Player with the least amount of deaths. Player with the least amount of deaths. You know, I think I'm going to go with MP again here. First player to get 15 denies. It's going to be... Queen of Pain. How long will the game be? This game will be 37 to 44 minutes. See how small that window is that I go for? Actually, let me think for a moment. Keep in mind that Secret is higher, much higher rated yeah. than Infamous. No. I'm preserving all this shit. Preserving all this shit. This is it. This is what's going to happen. So I'm real curious actually about the positions that we're going to be seeing out of the Nyx Assassin. Uh, out of the Ricky and out of the Elder Titan. Let's actually just get a view of what's happening for everyone right now. All right, let's get out of the free camera. Okay. So it's Carry Void. It's uh, off lane Elder Titan, and uh, it is mid Quap, and then the the two supports were Rubik and Ricky. Ricky's not played any other way other than support right now. Nobody's touched him as a core in a while, if ever. So looks like three runes for Secret. Nice distribution. I'm real curious what's going to be happening with this Elder Titan. And it looks like Earthshaker is going to be going into the safe lane. And then we have PL, Coddle, and Nyx up in top. Now, having done this, this is... This, I imagine, would feel very bad for the Void here. What items uh, does MP have? Yeah, he's going to have a bad time, I think. I also think that our good friend Storm Spirit might also have a good time. I think that Infamous is going to just go... Not all in, but heavy... On the mid one. They're gonna try here. Uh, Yapsir showed up with mana burn. It's just gonna drain the co-op's mana. Ricky wants to harass, but the but Secret has a sentry sitting within the tower range. So it kind of protects Where him is the from sentry? Ricky. It's uh, next oh, to the tower. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it kind of developed over the time. People used to put it right in the middle. But then yeah. when uh, Ricky comes in to put a sentry down, um, it's dewarded right away. But so now people place it like next and within the trees basically to slightly protect it. And so it still gives some vision range, but it just has such a much lower chance yeah. of getting denied. I mean, Elder Titan moves real fast. He yep. is awesome in the early game for just getting the right clicks off. I have no idea how this lane is going to go, and you know what? I'm frankly really not that interesting. Let me say that again. Frankly, I'm not that interested. <laughs> Sean, but you know interested. what? I'm so interesting. <laughs> I don't know. I, just feel, I hate myself. I hope uh, they let me host. Oh, God. That. I think that lane would have been cool if it wasn't Earthshaker versus Elder Titan. I think the lane will go okay, like even ish, um, until um, the uh, um, Elder Titan gets a couple more levels. Then things will be a lot more one sided, I think. But even then, I'm not sure. So Elder Titan is going to have mana problems, it's going to have price problems, a lot of stuff. So, I mean, right now, Rubik's been doing a good job of staying away from the XP of Faceless Void, who's like almost level 3. And MP is, you know, I really like this. He actually hasn't even expect anything yet yep he would never get phantom rush too early yeah in fact he, he can't even be oh, claimed to make any mistake early uh oh Ooh, big save from ricky actually what a fucking save holy <laughs> shit that was sick. oh my god that was incredible and of course with the regen thanks blitz for the knowledge drops oh my god the regen uh, Are you the talking idea, about that? yeah, the, of pushing into towers and what what the importance of regen is in terms of how it affects the gameplay in mid. Not just you mm -hmm. know that regen is important, but like how to incorporate it into all the concepts that you've been sharing over the months. Yeah, that was definitely pretty crazy. To, uh, the co-op definitely would have died first if it wasn't for the Ricky showing up and applying Orb of Venom slowing the Absor. 
Yeah. That was, that was really awesome. And who got the first blood? And it was uh, the Quapa's one. He's been having a pretty tough lane here ever yeah. since um, Nyx showed up to mana drain him. It's been very costly for him. I gotta say, this is this is something I watched a Nyx Assassin player do against Juggernaut. Just got mana burn and just began to burn all his mana as fast as humanly possible. And it, it was amazing how little of a threat Jug was at that point. I can yeah. imagine the same for Quap that so much of what I feel like is strong about her in mid is that she can escape, she can pursue and punish if you make a mistake. Her magic like damage the, is really nice early. That's the secondary aspect. It's more about is how many shadow strikes can she cast on her opponent. Yeah. Because it, it only hits one target, but it does a lot of damage to them and gives her chances to right-click them as they retreat. So he can basically use Shadow Strike to um, limit what advantage Storm might have and to try to lower him enough to, to get a kill or something. But because her mana is always low, she can't Shadow Strike, and sometimes she doesn't even have the mana to do Blink. Uh, that was really close, but Elder Titan ends up getting the kill. Oh, shit. I had to shit. die for it. Oh, my God. Hold on. My Dropbox wants to update. I got to turn this mm. shit the fuck off. Okay, That's actually go. the worst. You know, suddenly I'm worried that I didn't upload any of my Hearthstone footage from yesterday. Oh god, mm. it still wants to update? Are you kidding the shit out of me? No! Sorry about that, Kevin. I'm like super duper sorry. Apologize to the stream whose experience you just ruined, Sean. That was oh, 8 god. seconds of Dota 2 that they could have had. I can't believe I've done so, this. Um, at this point in the game, we can check last hits to kind of get an idea of who's uh, yeah. doing really well. Um, oh, Radiant are scanning. Um, and it looks like mid one is doing really well mid. Kezu's doing really well. A little bit better than the other time other than the kill. And the off lane is pretty much equal. Yeah. So that's not too bad. Um, other than that, the levels we can check between the Rubik and the Caudal are actually similar. So it seems like this uh, dual off lane thing has just been a trade fest for both teams. Yeah. I've only ever done this, I think, one, maybe two times. Dual off lane? Friends. Yeah. Or uh, dual off lane with. A carry type character. Gotcha. Can be really good. Oh, with the extra mana. It's just gonna keep throwing the lances out. Oh, that's interesting. A ring of regen really early for Faceless Void. Hmm. Do you know what he's gonna build with it? Um if I looked at the list. I don't remember the things that it builds into, all of them. Gotcha. Does it build into a Vlad's? Is Vlad's one of the options? Nope. What takes uh, headdress? Oof. Using it early, wow, 533. It's going to be a Lincoln's, probably. Oh, okay, yeah, way down the line. Uh-oh, Rubik, see you later. Ricky, I think Ricky he's been doing game. a lot of nice work this game. Yeah, he has. I don't think he's done, like, a lot of power, but, like, the, the good thing about the hero is showing up exactly where you need to be at the right time and using your moderately effective skills to impact a kill and get a kill. Yeah. Really changes the game a lot. And right now, three in the top four on the Radiant side. Secrets having, looks like just overall very nice lanes. I mean, Elder Titan, I don't know exactly what he's able to do with uh, a shitload of farm. Oh my, oh Doggy. my. Is that That's gonna hurt. Yeah, I know, it's upsetting. It's upsetting your cat or your dog, Dad. Hey. Hey. Is he just going to be able to turn on this? No, not quite enough damage. You know, for someone like Earthshaker, there are so many things that are just great to have the gold for. Obviously Blink, but also, you know, lots of damage items to help boost. Agonims yeah. to be able to jump around all over the place. No, no, no. That's a shit build. Don't talk about no, that. No, come on, come on. You no get no pro player does that. No, no pro player buys Ags right now. <laughs> it's all about having but... more mobility. More, more other versions of Blink, basically. Oh, this is a really cool way to do the gank. Oh, yes. Wow! Oh my god, her shaker is so good! Oh my god! No way! Earth shaker is unbelievable! Oh my god, you can't just hug the tree and hope it'll be okay. <laughs> that was unbelievably awesome. Holy shit, Earth shaker is so sick. I thought he was super dead there, actually, but... The, uh, the Earth Splitter timing with all the other stuff was really good, but they just didn't have that much damage. It's like, they're three lowest damage heroes, basically. Yeah, this Maybe. is the struggle that I've always had, uh, actually, I should say always had, in the three or so games I've played with Elder Titan, is that there's the bursts of damage, but 
it dips out very quickly, and you have to rely on your utility more so to have impact in the fight. Mm -hmm. And that might be a big issue for Infamous later, is if they get more fights like that where they just don't have the damage show up. Especially if Void doesn't get really farmed, or if Quap doesn't have a lot of items, they can be really limited for kills. Yeah. They've got good team fight though. Um, they just need to make sure they have the damage to back up that team fight. Otherwise, the team fight doesn't matter. So, in terms of itemization, a lot of very typical items coming out for all the players: double mal talisman to build into the veil later on. I'm curious, okay. though, about what's going to happen with MP, as he's already bought the Gloves of Haste and is already going to be going straight for the Belt of Strength. Will make him a lot beefier in terms of team fight, but, like, I really, really love getting Boots of Travel early on that character. Mm -hmm. um, one thing to remember is that some teams play heroes a lot differently than you might expect, so what might be normal in your pubs isn't always necessarily what a team wants to do. So yeah. Secret, for example, they oftentimes... They force, they basically force MP to get items that are maybe not as efficient, but they help the team win fights or yeah. make him safe. So treads is definitely the more efficient of between BOTs and treads, um, at least until you get to the point where you need to move around the map. And the other important thing is they got a call, bro. He doesn't need BOTs. Oh my god! Of course you just recall. But of course, I'm obsessed with the double recall, man. Are you kidding me? Oh my god! EG versus IG is starting in drafting phase. We're gonna head over to that. You want to give up our predictions, dude? I don't, I don't know if I don't think I do. You know, that said, that said, we're just going to get live updates as to what's happening. Do you have that open in stream? Uh, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm going to keep doing my free cam observing because I'm, I'm very curious. You know, one of the, one of the things that I just love about learning more of Dota is that I get infinitely more curious about every single match because I have some context for how how the other ones go every single you know hero is playing and what their goals are and how are they going to overcome this problem and stuff like that it makes it much more engaging oh and he's going straight for yasha it looks like going to be very team fight focused at least in the early game uh oh oh oh, oh i missed that fight oh it was really satisfying just watch oh. now one thing that is awesome about earth splitter is that it deals a percentage of max HP as damage, which means it scales oh so deliciously well. It does, yeah. Um, and it deals half magic and half physical damage too. So it stacks perfectly with his order or with his uh, natural order passive and any minus armor his team has too. It's pretty good. Pretty good. Big nuke. Um, which which game are you talking about? The EG IG Vitality one? Is that the one that you're yes. curious about? Okay. E one is on. Egg. Dude, where's... I gotta get my iPad out, man. Is this thing fucking charged? Do you have four iPads? Cause you're gonna, or three iPads? You're gonna need a lot of iPads to watch all, right, all the let me, games. Let me charge my iPad right now and just make sure that I have the capability of uh, tuning into at least one additional match. Of course, my other monitor is occupied by all of the tech, the technology that is running right now. They're pushing the bot lane. Oh, interesting. He's not actually gonna go for Yasha. Next, he wants to get the Diffusal Blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't, you don't get Yasha right away. Well, he queued up Yasha, so I was surprised. Oh, I was okay. Like, oh, I guess he's going to be chasing and team fighting a little more, but yeah. One of the best counters against Void actually is Mana Drain. So between oh, yeah. Caudal and PL, it'll be fast Diffusal is going to make this game really easy. Works yeah, really mean, well against Elder Tank, all of them. Yeah, the Mana Pool is not actually very big right now on Faceless Void. He has 350, which is enough for Chronosphere and uh, uh, a few time walks, but I mean. Oh, yeah. And is they have uh, Nyx. Oh, Nyx shit. I completely whiff that. And that is why Caudal gets Illuminate. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Illuminate. Oh. Makes you farm, makes you push lanes, helps you kill heroes. Oh. Oh. Puppy is a, is a player who loves buying bucklers. Fun fact about him. Sometimes he just buys buckler, and he leaves it like that. Because he likes oh, the armor, I damn it. Up the items. There we go. Ah, look at all of our data. He's probably going to turn into a mech, but he is not. He does sometimes just buy buckler. And see, these are these are the moments that I get very. Wow, no, is he? Okay, no, that's the diffusal blade recipe. I was like, what is he switching back on? It's moments like these that I always get a little bit confused as to what the best places to be are. 
Um, uh, for which character? It's Phantom Lancer. For Phantom Lancer. Um, and he's trying to stay active, but he's you know dipping into the jungle looking for opportunities at this point. I think farming in the area where you might fight is a good idea, just because his damage output is pretty good. Yeah. Also got Spirit Lance damage, interestingly. Now, this is really fun when you get the Aghanim Scepter upgrade, because if you're team fighting, you just deal a shitload of damage. And that is something that will never happen at TI, most likely. No, I'm gonna bet, you know, I will bet you one size enlargement or shrinkage okay. that we're gonna see an Aghanim Scepter on Phantom Lancer this game. There is no way that somebody buys right. Aghanim Scepter. But are you willing to bet the size yeah, of sure. your representation? Oh wait, so you're only adjusting my size? What about, do? is there anything in play to... Okay, look, if I'm right, I'm YouTube. shrinking you. But if okay. I'm wrong, what do you want to have happen to mine? Uh, hmm. I, oh, this, man, this is such a cool way to bet, but there's there's no way to do it. Unless we, like, change it up sometimes. All right, yeah, we'll, I mean, we'll, bet, we'll bet my size on this one, okay? Oh, God, that deals so much damage. I mean, he is going to be able to get out in time, but, I mean, I'm just really impressed... That's the Yabster's ability about, to, or excuse me, Queen Tech's ability to just nail so many Earth Splitters. But they're not getting kills, is the big thing. They still don't have the damage. Yes. Um, maybe if Elder Time gets a medallion or something, that would make a difference. Because then he could deal a lot more damage with his right clicks. Everybody's right clicks. But not well, killing that guy there? Like, that that's so many resources that they just used. What are your thoughts about the, uh, Going straight for Lincolns after power treads. On Void? Yeah, on Faceless Void seems very expensive. Um, it's expensive, yes, uh, but against a lot of big disables, it's kind of important because Void is Void needs to not be disabled, basically, to yeah. um, to ensure that he can contribute to the fight. So the most common way to deal with that is a, is a Manta style, but that's actually, I think, 5,000 gold now, if I'm not Ooh. mistaken. If I'm not mistaken. Manta um, style, I believe, is... Yeah, it's 5k right now, and Lincoln's is actually a little bit less than that. 4850. And he kind of needs a mana regen item anyways, especially against all the mana drainers, so... The the problem is that there's so many ways for them to break Lincoln's, but... Great but positioning by Ricky. Probably kill Yapsor here. Gonna miss you so much, Yapsor. The indestructible Yapsor! Uh-oh. Oh, there's Fisher. Is Rubik actually going to fall? No, turned. Wow, what a great shot. Look at that. That was an unbelievable nade by Keeper of the Light. I don't know what the name of that ability is. It's Push Grenade or whatever. Uh, push Grenade. <laughs> Blinding Light. Here we go. <clears throat> Losing Void here sucks a lot for Infamous. Losing what? Losing Void sucks a lot for Infamous. I, I don't worry about the death, I worry about the fact that they're using their big teamfight skills and not getting kills. It's the same problem. If they're if they're using Chronosphere and Earth Splitter and stuff and they're not killing heroes, then they're gonna lose the game because that means they're not getting traction from their abilities that are supposed to be good at getting them kills. And Wait. and again Ru Rubik just doesn't even feel good. Like what has he stolen in this game? He's he's gone the right places, but he hasn't contributed to getting kills. It's just been too short. If that was like a lion or something. Oh shit, she screamed at that courier. That hits curves. Dude, by the way, I was totally correct on who would get the most denies first. I'm feeling very powerful right now. Yeah, which is, Faceless Void is having a hard time. Is it Claw? Oh, yeah. Why is mine saving progress? What is this shit? I don't know. I don't know. All right, mine I need to like, reset my client or something because. Maybe mine's just bugged. Maybe you can get challenges if you stick to the end of the game. Or if you don't stick to the end of the game. I really don't know. I mean, MP is able to just team fight so much better as a result. Oh my god, goodbye. I'll miss you so much. Man, the timing on that was very nearly correct. Oh, I need to check my fantasy points for the match. How are we doing? I don't know. How are you doing uh, fantasy points? Yapsor's got 10.1. Puppy's ahead. So I probably should have picked Puppy today. And... Storm? What? 6.8? Mid one, you're letting me down, dude. How does he have so few? What is this crap? Is I he can't just believe he's done slow? this. Wow, I can't believe he has so few fantasy points, dude. That's okay. Oh he's my gonna... god, my iPad's on. 
Uh oh. It's gonna get some. You got an later. iPad. Okay, the EG IG drop just ended. Well, there's one more pick for EG, but. But it's over. The game's over. All right, opening Twitch. This is great, man. This is how this is how games were meant to be watched. Okay, so at this point in the game. Um, you know, what are the big moments? Oh my gosh, look at this. It looks like Faceless Void is halting the plan on going for the Lincoln Sphere. Uh -huh. Instead of going for a Battle Fury. Interesting. Why do you think he's doing this? Uh, I would say probably to emphasize the team fight, but also to allow him to get more farm. Yeah, I would agree. And Lincolns would be countered pretty easy no matter... Like, they have so many disables. Yeah, I mean, especially once you get four second mana burn on Nyx, it's like, who cares? Yep, exactly. Whereas Battle Fury would actually increase his farm level and all that stuff. I mean, it's kind of crappy no matter what. I, I I don't I wouldn't necessarily say this is a good sign for their team, but all right. Let me go we'll ahead and go to the point. TI uh, Seven English broadcast camera, so that way I can manage this second thing. And I'm gonna have to go to the restroom at some point, but I really don't even I don't give a damn. Infamous is pretty far behind right now. Ooh. Wow, look at this, another Pugna. That Naga Siren. Oh god, of course. Artesia on Naga Siren is amazing. Let's get a 150 minute game going, man. Okay. I need to switch to that game so that way I can bet for the 1,000 second game. I mean, game. if you want to abandon ship, I'm down. I, I don't think I'm going to get any of these oh, right. Oh, wait, no. Zai is on Naga Siren. Artesia on Necrophos. Sumail on Pugna. Universe Marana. Crit on Elder Titan. That is going to be a cool game. I mean, I want to hit up that game after this game. I'm very interested to see how this one plays out. Also, you know. I'm, I'm willing to jump ship if you want. I think this game is going to most likely go Secret's Way. No matter what. Um, God, not, not no matter what, but cool I mean, game. it's it's a it's an offset. It's a one-sided match anyways, probably. Alright, chat, chat. Hit me with a... Stay if you want me to stay in this game, or an EG versus IG if you want me to switch to the other game. Feel free to use caps lock, but don't paste a lot of lines in one. Just give me the one phrase. Stay or EG, IG. Uh, there's a lot of EG, IG. A lot of EG, IG. It's all EG, IGs. Okay. Holy shit, Let's this go. is the first notable team fight. Get in there. That I think might possibly go the way of Infamous. And no. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Oh my god. Phantom Lancer. Mm. Alright, we're getting the hell out of this one. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm right. hush rushing over so I can do predictions. Oh my god, this we is have so fun, dude. Are you kidding me? Dude, this is what me and Eric used to do, like, every year. We would just, like, get in client and watch games together and have drinks and just chat about shit, and Eric would explain to me how all the heroes were. Good Who's gonna win? EG, no shame in my game. Ancient stacks by 30 minutes. Uh, let's see here. By 30 minutes, 16 to 20. Will Cow be killed for 10? Go lower. No, fuck no. Fuck you. I'm shrinking you if you get out of line one more time, young man. You're gonna be a tiny pixel. It's gonna look like you're trying to star in a role that, to the sequel, Toy Soldiers, which is an obscure movie from the 90s. Jesus. Okay. Um, team with the most Roshan kills. Oh, let me look at the lineup. Um, you got four seconds. Go, go, go. Ah, uh, G Vitality, I think, is probably gonna have the most. Fuck! Fuck! What's that nun, dude? What is that? Oh my god! Oh god! Oh! Oh god! Oh! Oh, that looks oh like, god! Uh, Sumail's uh, tag of choice for this tournament is Mode Bob. Looking forward to that one. God, Last he's so year tough. It was coffin. I don't know what this one means. Probably has to do with his music. Probably. All right, so here is. Zai coming top. Where where the hell is Arteezy? Oh, there he is. I think the. But do you know why they just teleported around? Uh, no, I was too busy being absolutely gutted at the fact that I missed that last vote. It's because of uh, lane predictions. So EG probably mispredicted where they thought their opponents would be, and as a result, um, yeah, ended up having to teleport to swap. Universe also had to use Leap here to not die level 1, so that's pretty costly for him, because he could have been arrowing neutrals. Yeah. Smail is just going to be pooping on Dragon Knight. Most likely, yeah. This may be a hero that can actually out-damage Dragon Knight's regen. But, I mean, this this looks like the, the sort of swap where Arteezy just wants to be up against Tidehunter. 
Grit's going to make sure that he's all safe and sound, but I don't really know how to think about this uh, uh, top lane with Zai and with Marana, because, I mean, typically I'm used to seeing Universe... Well, I should say, typically I'm used to seeing Naga Sirens not played in a support position. Mm -hmm. um, the hero's been nerfed a lot as a core, so it's I'm, I'm definitely excited to see what he does too. Uh, but usually they do, like... Arcane Boots, sometimes Solar Crest, and then they go into... If they're having a really good game, or they have a lot of space, they'll form a Radiance and then become a regular hero. Uh, and basically take over carry position, more or less. Um, but I think he'll most likely do something like Glimmer, he might go Guardian Greaves, he might go Solar Crest. There's a lot of supporting items, and then he just uses his ultimate, ideally at the same time as like Call Down, Ravage, stuff like that, and lets his team reset. Oh, wow! What a read! That's, I mean, it's not... Are you, wait, are you talking about them killing dogfights or something else? I'm talking about the, the Night Stalker that walked up and Sumail and team was just all already there. Four heroes in total already all showed up. Yeah. And they all got there like at the same time too. It was pretty efficient. Yeah. And that was bot lane. Universe is going down bot. Looks like our good friend. Oh. This sh should be a kill. Yeah. That was well done. No! Oh. Arteezy's, of course, got the homing missile set on Tidehunter. Wherever Tidehunter be, Arteezy will follow. Uh, Arte oh, sorry, I thought you were actually talking about the homing missile skill. No, no. No, I was I was meaning in the, in, in the sort of conversational we're at a party I and I bring up homing missiles sort of thing, you know. <laughs> John, I only speak Dodo, so you're going to have to be real obvious with me, okay? That's right. Imagine we're at a party and that... And that Arteezy is thirsty, and he's into Tidehunter, and he's just following Tidehunter around wherever Tidehunter goes. Tidehunter's just trying to get some space. Arteezy's just, mm, just can't take his eyes off him. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Point, I mean, uh, there's no more regen on Sakata, and Sumail is... That's not true. He's got dragon blood, dude. His blood's bumping. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course, but he's out of regen items. You're right. I do need to speak more precisely. Universe gets a kill. Ooh. Oh, the tricks! He's still going to die, but it was cool. Alright, he can maybe solo kill one of these guys, but it's going to be tough. You have to He's level 4 and level uh, 2 against level 3. Alright, one of my 85 tabs that are open are playing an ad on me, and you know who it probably is? Who? Liquipedia. That, shit, that site plays shitty ads, I'm going to say it. I can't believe it. Well, I mean, I, I never casually leave Liquipedia open. It's such an error. Actually, my Liquipedia Wikipedia. is casually open. I'll close both of the typical offenders, and then my Let me computer open will run it. Reverse infamous, so we can keep tabs on that match as well. It's looking stupidly good. Of the top five net worths, Secret is four of them, with Quap on the other team ranking in third. Mm. Oh my God! The perfect arrow follow up, and that's going to be a see you later time for V. IGV super. Kind of surprised to see Marana get a. Resurgence in popularity. Why is that? Um, I don't know. She she really fell off for a long time. I mean, she was really popular even maybe last year at TI times, but um, she just kind of fell off a lot. Starstorm got nerfed a bunch. People just started going for different cores, basically. Oh, nice stalker on the mid lane. That's perfect timing. Dogfights continues to have the best gamer tag in all of history. Go dogfights. Look at this shrine okay. usage. Isn't it beautiful? I love it. It's absolutely lovely. Poor Tide Hunter. Just not even invited to the party. Almost at mana boots though, and that's that's pretty nice. Like six minute mana boots. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. He's holding a skill point too, actually. Um in case he needs to use a gush, I guess. Interesting I choice. I hope to see eggs on Tide Hunter just because I think it's so awesome. Oh, goodbye. Oh, that was, oh, that dog was unbelievable dogfight walking right in the way, Ooh. man. They, like, they countered that so perfectly, because I was about to use Mirror Image to remove the slow, because it dispels the slow from Void. And then everything would have been fine, but Shackles came too early, and then they blocked the arrow. Ooh. I gotta I get rid of this mouse cursor. The one on the minimap? Uh, no, look at this. If I go to free cam. The old oh, mouse cursor what? from the other person stays exactly where it was. Oh, dude, that was happening to me, but it was always on the minimap. It was so annoying. Very disorienting. I mean, Arteezy's basically getting all the farm 
that he really wants. I mean, oh, Jesus, I don't understand how Sumail does this. He has 50 last hits at six and a half minutes. A great zoning stomp by crit. That's one of the things I love so much is that the size of Elder Titan's abilities are just ridiculous. There's a kill. That's going to be two. DK in mid also goes down. This is maybe not going to go down. Oh, there's stop! Yes, Elder Titan and EG. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. That was amazing. Holy shit. That stomp from Crit Sumail gives it a hip hip hooray. That Meanwhile, was, that was pretty good. Wait, wait, let's huh? we tune in the most important thing, fantasy points right now. Yes, let's let's go ahead and Oh Sumail. I picked you, Sumail. Oh, and universe is number two, that's so good, because offlane heroes usually don't get All that right. many points. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the player perspective, and what I'm gonna try to do is go to Arteezy's player perspective, and the instant he moves his mouse cursor to a position that's not so annoying. Oh shit, I tried to free camera it. Okay, let's try this again. All right. All right. It's an I'm interesting game you're playing. All right. Yeah, I'm trying to make sure the mouse cursor can lock off somewhere else. Does anyone know how to get rid of this damn mouse cursor? Oh, I, for God's sake! I really hope that isn't there when I have to do Weatherman MTI. I would make my clips a little look bit. Look at this! Look at this! Oh, the mouse cursor! Ha! Ah. Oh shit! What a setup! Oh my God, the damage! All the oh amp my. damage. Tower fell before 10 minutes, that was an easy pick, man. That was a really good play by Cicada, though. Oh, it doesn't get him! No Ooh. Ravage hit? No, not a single Ravage was hit that day, but with... Oh. In the name of the moon, they're able to escape, no problem. Got the universe all the way down here, man. Just Moonlight Shadow, no problem. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Is Sol Ring gonna get nerfed on after this tournament? There's, I'm seeing a lot of Sol Ring picks on weird heroes. Yeah, And it I, seems like a good idea. Smell's just gonna suck him off a little. Of course, the retreat in Seuss. I love this Pugna build, uh, the the max decrep one. Like, I get max one Nether Ward because the damage doesn't scale super well. And to be yeah. honest, most of his enemies are strength heroes anyway. So, but maxing out decrep gives you so much more kill potential. It slows your opponents so much more. It's yeah, just definitely the way to go. Lowers the yeah, cooldown I mean, like a disgusting amount. Jeez, I mean that is ridiculous. I mean Nether Blast is. Five second cooldown. I had no idea it was that low. And Decrep goes from 15 to 6, so it has, oh. what, 3.5 out of 6 uptime of uh, being um, ethereal, bonus damage, and slowed. I mean, now this he's just going to move around killing towers. This is ridiculous. This is so stupid. I mean, 60 last hits on the two cores, not even at 10 minutes. Okay, will a tower Goodbye. be killed before 10 minutes? Does your say current none? Yeah. Attack. What the hell? Out. I can't believe they've done this. My points. How am I supposed to enjoy TI if I can't get the predictions during the group stage challenge? Wow. This is just, this is complete and utter domination thus far. I mean, in terms of just, like, look at this. Uh, paparazzi. Oh, gosh. Paparazzi, by the way, is a player who I watched uh, when I was getting into carry. I started to get more into the carry role right when you went out of town. Mm -hmm. uh, for one of the two weddings your sister had. And uh, I was on my vacation, and I watched maybe like 20 games, 30 games of paparazzi or some insane amount, just like back to back to back to back mm -hmm. in one day, just to watch how he played Sven, just to see his patterns. And it was just so glorious. And here he is sitting at 2.8k net worth, doubled by Sumail. In fact, Tide is now winning the farm war. Oh, oh it's a competition! I th it's just because Dragonite's been having a tough time, and EG's been moving around so sporadically. Like they just kind of like disappear from the map, and yeah. they appear somewhere and do a three-man gank, and they do it in yeah, a I way that guarantees the kill. I feel like we should just talk about their movement on the map because you you've been talking to me about the entire idea of like once you know mid lane's down and the carry really needs some space in order to farm. Just watch the other four players and how often they stay out of vision and get active on the map. Nether Blast is so fucking ridiculous. Yeah. I can't believe how good that spell is. And they're pushing in. They're going to be able to get tier 3 damage at like 11 minutes into the game. And... Ah! I mean, I do need... I just... I'm so amazed. Look at that. Look at that. Tier 3 damage. 11 minutes and 11 seconds. 
No problem. Yeah. Oh, he's not done yet. He got, he's got a regen run here. He's just going to ping this a few times. The, I think no the reason this is way. so popular right now is because all of the other ways to hit towers have been nerfed heavily over the last year or two. And Nether Blast, like, look at this. He's, he's actually going to kill a tier 3 tower at, like, sub 15 minutes if they don't show. Like, they actually have to stop whatever they're doing to stand yeah. in this lane so that Pugna leaves. And he might just kill Tide. Like, oh, here comes another blast. Like, this is ridiculous. Oh my and, God. and Naga just sits there. If they don't kill Naga when they initiate, as long as Siren and they leave. And look at this. Look at this. Super can't even, like, try to get this pick off kill. Everyone's having to come back. Paparazzi trying to get some farm in the middle. Night Stalker trying to get some farm. Go dog fights. Level four. No problem. The stomp whiffs. No problem. Very wisely. No uh, Song of the Siren. They might back now. Maybe. Possibly. I mean, Dragon Form was just used. No way. No. Oh! Oh, <laughs> shit. oh my god, alright, the whole team's there and they're all asleep! The whole, oh, the Earth Splitter is enormous and they all get pulled together! That is an incredible ravage. A lot of people are gonna die. Nobody dies. No fucking buddy died on EG. No buddy's dead. Everyone's alive. They invisibladed. And of course, Arteezy, nowhere to be found, is very happy playing PvE. It's a new season. He's in hardcore mode. He needs to get as many levels as he can before he dies. He's going to take his little Herodric yeah. cube and form himself a Rod of Atos. Holy shit, dude. Are you kidding the shit out of me with that? Un unbelievable, man. I mean, it's not it's alive, but it is 13 minutes. Yeah, that's that's actually kind of insane. Like how much they're winning this game. But all of their all their spell coordination is perfect every single time. They cover their heroes. They don't waste their abilities. They've been landing like decrep arrows and like stuff like that. Their, decrep their energy arrows, is so good. I mean, Star Storm with decrep, it's just like insane. And I feel like Night Stalker hasn't even had the opportunity to use his, you know, vision and speed at night mm -hmm. in the slightest this game. It's just been continually shut down or he hasn't even been anywhere remotely close. And look at this five man going bot. Yep. This is definitely a bit of a roam hero. And Gyrocopter's good at team fighting and Tide's good at team fighting, but they're doing this so stupidly early and they whiff their ravage. I didn't get anything out of it, so now it's all difficult. Ooh. Oh, goodbye, Gyrocopter. Goodbye. It was like, it was, it was like a pleasure oh. seeing you. No fuck, fucking way yet again. Missile 2 cooldown slow is 60%, so... But that's, yep, Shrines are dead. I, I think this game's over. Oh my gosh, I was a they're bit actually off on gonna my... rack them for 14 minutes. This oh, and he's, he's got an Arcane Rune too. His extra OP. Like What?! That's actually disgusting, dude. Potom plus Naga? Potom, by the way, is Marana, for any of you who are curious. Right. Well, looks like our TZ might just heal for infinity damage. Still only three deaths. A beautiful stomp. Goodbye. Uh. Like, you know. <laughs> okay. I was going to say, that looked a whole lot like a rage to me. Yeah. But they did pause first. They are actually getting so crapped on. This is ridiculous. Like they, they're yeah. every single hero they have combos with each other one, and that that gives you like the easiest ways to like get kills and and end games. And they just can't take a fight, and they don't have Ravage for 23 seconds. And I'm pretty sure they're going to be triple racks by the time Ravage comes off cooldown again. I love watching a game that is this one-sided. This is one of my favorite things in all of esports is seeing a differential in skill because this is a completely fine lineup from the other team. Yeah. Like. They picked a lot of the most uh, the strongest heroes in the meta for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, especially the Night Stalker getting that first pick. Gyrocopter has been very popular right now. God. And now they're Holy like now they have another way. God. They just Atos first, and then they do the same combos. And that has an incredible range. Yeah, and they're probably do anything. Enormous, enormous range. Just incredible. 1150, which is about two times the range of a normal auto attack. Mm -hmm. Or spell cast range. Or I should say, it's about two times the range of a nice, long, ranged attack. Most spells, 700 or so. I yep. mean, yep. 1200 is just ridiculous. And then if, uh, whichever hero they go on, if they just had a force staff or something, they could actually stop this from happening every time, but they don't, it's too early in the game for them to have a four staff. Yeah, I mean, they don't even have any mobility Four's options, and right now, let's just, Zion Universe are picking this off, and the stronger heroes, just picking up, runes pushing down mid lane, and all of a sudden, yeah, these are weaker heroes going for this shrine, but there's no opportunity, because suddenly you have to pay attention to your mid tier two. Yep. 
there's literally nothing they can do other than go to places that EG is. Because there's just not enough time. Wow, that's such a great point to bring up about the fact that with no mobility items, they literally have to just be nearby to look for any opportunities. They can't do anything cutesy. They can't take advantage of anything that is a minor misstep. It needs to be like a big head-on mashing team fight in every time or, it, or, or for any opportunity to arise for Vitality. They could maybe take Dragonite and push other lanes with his ultimate, but yeah. it's just well, not I very mean, safe. I don't think DK ever got the chance to do anything in Dragon form. He He's did. gone. See you later for 60 seconds. Oh, hey, they wrapped around. Ooh! This is just so fucking cool, dude. Their whole co Everything combos so well. That is so insane. You know, you know what's also cool? Riptide does minus five armor. So right before the Earth Splitter hits, it further lowers their armor. It's just so cool. Everything, like every single one of their heroes combos well. 16 minutes and 40 fucking 6 seconds. I was wrong on the Ancient Stacks. You were correct. You know what? You know, you get to get, you, I'm going to enlarge you. I'm going to enlarge you get, a little we bit. We didn't here. get points for that anyways because it didn't even hit 30 minutes. I, I We also didn't get points for the tower is killed before oh, 10 minutes. Shit. Those bastards. Oh, Valve. fuck. I, oh, I don't get to shrink you for nothing. It was a 16-minute and 45-second game. The only person who died was Zai three times. That was that was pretty impeccable. That was pretty disgustingly impeccable game. Grelwin says no Ogs on PL in the game where Secret defeated Infamous. Well, oh, Grelwin wow. looks like we got a ban incoming. <laughs> <laughs> Go watch another channel. You do not bring up my mistakes. Oh man, oh Fabio said it too. Looks like we're gonna lose two supporters in Day Nine TV today. <laughs> I tease, I tease. It was funny. Oh my gosh, you know, I, 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 Kevin. Yeah. This is so unbelievable to watch. I can't believe it. I mean, I have personally been mired in my own gameplay and improvement and trying to understand the game. And there's been times when I've tuned into matches, uh, specifically for Kiev. Um, where I had some knowledge, but not that much knowledge. You know, I always watch a lot of first-person streams. That's sort of like at night, going to bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do what everyone does. I'm going to go to bed on time at 11.30 and get in bed and just fucking watch streams with light like this close to my eyes yeah. until it's 12.30. And my melatonin is really setting in and it'll, like the phone's falling on my face and shit. But, I mean, uh, you, you've heard me talk about how just kind of end of June, start of July that I feel like I, I, I got what was going yeah. on in games. I could understand the beginning, middle, and end of a game as a cohesive sequence. Um, I don't think there's any games right now. Watching these is such a treat. We have uh, it. Well, it says EG versus TNC coming up soon, but we are still in the series A two. Um, so, for any of you who are curious about the results, EG went one and one with TNC. Liquid. 2-0 versus IG Vitality, LGD 2-0 versus Fnatic, and Secret 1-1 with Empire. And then the matches that were started at 11 a.m. was OG 2-0, Cloud9, Newbie 1-1 with IG, VP 2-0 against DC, and LFY 2-0 against Execration. And um, the, the teams are broken into two groups called A and B. <laughs> Interesting names. Yep. Uh, group A and Group B, so uh, that's why I said that it was Series A1 and Series B1 that we just did. Uh, so that way, by breaking the players into two groups, I can do the A matches and then give the A players a little bit of the break, and then do the A2 matches, give the A players a little break, and the A3 matches, and so on. So we're watching A2. These are the second games that are being played. Now, as incredibly one-sided as that first game was, I'd like to note that LGD... Uh, oh, LGD started their games a little earlier. Never mind. LGD is 2-0 against Empire in this bracket of games. Um, man, a lot of interesting picks thus far. Are there far. actually no games live right now? Looks like there are no games live. I mean, typically what tournaments will do is permit... Uh, I don't know if this works this way in Dota 2, but there's often uh, established optional timeouts that people can have. Uh, in StarCraft, it was every two matches, players are given a imposed timeout. Not excuse me, imposed timeout, but like an imposed break that... We'll always happen game one and two break in three and four break in five and six break and players can opt to go through that but players are often given one additional break beyond that yep we don't do that in dota man too much shit on the schedule it's basically just that here's your schedule and um they if anything they try to limit the breaks between games because teams will very easily especially in the past the especially because it's like 
five players instead of just one. It'll be very easy for them, for one player to get lost in the bathroom. Not lost, you know, but right. uh, uh, want to go outside and smoke. Every every team will want to go out yeah. and smoke as five players, talk about the games, and walk all the way back to the arena. You know, So generally, they're, um, things are a little bit more tightly controlled in Dota 2 tournaments. So yeah, it's possible I... they're are all finishing the same time, or they're swapping teams in, because every time a new team plays, especially if it's on stream one, they'll have to take down tech and reset it up again. Um, and most of the other matches are being played probably from their team rooms, I assume. Or there, maybe there's a playroom. Yeah. I can't remember how they do it usually. By the way, for any of you who are curious about this uh, bracket, this is wins, draws, losses. Each team plays two against oh. every opponent in the It's groups. all in-game. That makes it easier. Yeah, I, I didn't even realize this. This is fantastic. And here's the schedule. Uh, right now we are getting ready to watch this second match here. If I can scroll down, where is... Oh, hi, little sweetheart. There you are. Yep, this is it. EG, IG. Game one just happened, and this is the match that we just saw that was over instantaneously. Uh, looks like Infamous versus Secret is starting. I have that draft open, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, use the restroom because... Okay, so, because so we're, just, we're just ahead of schedule a little. Yeah, so I'm actually just going to open this up in game, Kevin. Please entertain the shit out of this audience in my absence. And Despy, are you going to do? Are you going to take my place? You want to smell my mouth? That's such a good cat. She loves smelling mouths. Yeah, she's so she's so happy. All right. My dog does that too sometimes. Get this out of the way. Dark Seer, Earth Shaker, love it. Bat Rider, Nightman. Hello, stream. The old first pick silencer. Um, silencer has been really popular in the last month or so, especially as a support. I think part of the reason.